Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel for another tutorial on Highly on Holdings. This is going to be a short summary of the longer video that I release every single week. So for you guys that don't have the time, you're going to get the highlights of what I'm going to talk about in that video. But Highly on Holdings just came off of their Q3 earnings and where I thought it was fairly marginal and I was fairly neutral in my reaction to it, it spurred off a couple of events that I want to talk about with you guys on this short video and that was a downgrade by Goldman Sachs to $2.25. The very next day Goldman Sachs entered into a block of Hylion shares that increased their share position to 550,000 shares. It was an increase of 170 percent. I want you guys to understand that these downgrades are aimed at you and they're aimed at you alone. All right, other institutions, they don't buy into a renewed sell on a stock that has so much promise into its future, and then they enter in and do the complete opposite by buying into the shares that they're telling you to sell, and in a year is going to be worse than what they're entering into the shares at. Now, there was some insider buying that happened just this week in Hylion. First of all, from Dan Gallagher, entered into a 20,000 share position. This is the Chief Operating Officer at Highly on Holdings. Very important to note when insiders take those cracks at large swaths of stock, not to imply that they know anything, but it's bullish enough with the insiders starting to pick them up. Now, John Panzer is the CFO, Chief Financial Officer. He hasn't been at the helm for very long. And it hasn't taken him very long to take a nice bite out of highly on shares here in the low threes in two separate installments, one at the $3.26 level, the other at the $3.10 level. Now the stock has rolled off just a little bit here, just one penny below $3 a share. But I really want to question and have you guys think independently on this opportunity with so much institutional buying the one being Citadel this week that increased their position by 700% in their share base of Citadel Securities. This represented a real value increase in the share ownership and highly on holdings by over 600%. So you have big institutions that are buying up big shares of, of the company. You have insiders of the company uh, buying shares in the company. And you have big institutions like Goldman Sachs none of which garner a bigger reputation than Goldman and actually recommending that you sell the stock. I think this recommendation was made on false pretenses and I believe it was an in uh, a, a direct attempt to pick up shares at a cheaper valuation and it did not work. It backfired on them. The shares spurred up after the Q3 earnings. There was just way too much information come on the Q3 call to make us suggest that Q3 is going to be, or excuse me, 2023 is going to be a very interesting time for Hylion and the risk of betting that the shares remain recessed here at the $3 level is decaying on the vine. Short sellers are starting to close up shop. we we'll start to relax some of that downward pressure on the stock that has been a, a, a real victim of short selling over the last couple of years since coming to public markets. The delays have not helped Hylion. The uh, uh, geopolitical tension has not helped Hylion. The energy crunch globally has not helped Hylion. And finally, the delays in executing along their timeline has not helped Hylion. With that said, they've introduced their uh, uh, working ERXs to the fleets. They're engulfed in fleet trials right now. Hylion has actually conducted some of those trials themselves, uh, which have come back very favorably in understanding how the ERX is going to uh, perform once it comes into mass commercialization and scale next year. Now, before that happens, CARB NHTSA EPA certification has to be met. It has been disclosed on previous press releases that Hylion will collaborate with none other than Cummins in the industry. There is no bigger who's who in the industry than Cummins. It is safe to suggest that Cummins will be a force multiplier for Hylion as they seek out and achieve this critical milestone in the evolution of the company. Okay. Second, 
government mandates are going to be key to observe here how fleets strategically position themselves to meet the uh, mandates that are coming through the incentives that are coming. And I want you to differentiate between the two. Incentives are going to come in form of tax credits, the $40,000 tax credit, as well as the $1 tax credit uh, back to both producers and uh, consumers of RNG, CNG, no matter what the mix is, they're going to get that dollar of credit uh, for, for producing and uh, on the consumption side. So really lucrative uh, incentives there from the government as well as the mandates that are going to place some oversight restrictions or criterion on the OEMs to produce a certain number of percentage of vehicles that are low carbon vehicles, those uh, vehicles that uh, need to be able to provide their fleets that they serve that low carbon criteria. Now, the mandates on the fleet side are reciprocal, which means that the fleets actually have to purchase a certain number of percentage by the drop dead date, and it is looming in 2025. The jockeying and the positioning has to be happening right now. The question is, when is the momentum going to pick up for a company like Hylion? And I think here in the early stages of the game here in 2022, we might still have a little bit of time to continue to monitor the stock price. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody is caught up in the volatility of what has been 2022. And it's during times like this where you have to double down on your focus. You have to double down on your focus because... There are going to be opportunities that are made, I think none bigger than Hylion Holdings here in this market, to be looked at when nobody else is looking at, except for those institutions that I talked about at the very top of this delivery. Institutions are buying and insiders are buying. Why can't you? Guys, I appreciate you tuning into this message. Make sure you catch my long video on Hylion. It's a 60-minute tutorial on some of the subtopics that we talked about here, activity in 2022, and activity to be expected and to be earmarked in 2023. For catalysts regarding Hylion Holdings, guys, leave your comments at the bottom, leave your uh, comments, share the message with anybody out there that you know might be interested in the content, hit the notification bell, and finally, if you enjoy content like this, make sure and subscribe to the channel. The benefits could be infinite. We're looking to speak to you, retail investors that for many, many years have taken the brunt end of downgrades like this. No more. We're here to try to really explain the motivations behind those, really be open and honest with our dialogue about really kind of leveling the opportunity for those folks out there that maybe enter into a few shares just like the big guys are and where they would misguide you in telling you to sell the shares, <laughs> they're in turn buying those same shares. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of the message. Good luck in your investment future.